Ah, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Veterans Minimum YouTube. And your boy Lamb is checking in to give you something to get through these dog days of summer. You know, we've been a little quiet on this end on the YouTube channel, but we're still pumping out content. Check out Veterans Minimum podcast, uh, SoundClouds and iTunes available. But today what we're going to do and going forward is I'm going to be putting out some videos on a weekly basis up until the football season starts. And we'll be talking about different things. Today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about NFL Offensive Rookie of the Year and who's going to bring home this prestigious award, right? In the last five seasons, a running back has won this award three times. That is Alvin Kamara, Eddie Lacy, Big Eddie now, and Todd Gurley have won this prestigious award. A wide receiver by the name of Odell Beckham Jr., as you can tell, I know him very, very well, has also won this award. And last but not least, quarterback Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys. Now, what we're going to be basing these picks on are these three individual players that I think are in the running for Offensive Rookie of the Year, right? So we're going to go behind the odds, right? Obviously, me, the betting guy that I am, as you guys know, this is what I'm basing my picks off of. So my favorite pick is going to be a guy that's in the top five play based on the odds, right? One of the biggest favorites to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. The other guy is a mid-tier value pick, a player that I think has a chance, and he provides a pretty nice payout. You know, it's a guy that might be sort of a, a, a mid-tier long shot, but not an ultra long shot because a long shot pick is a player that is over 30 to 1 odds, right? $1 wins you 30, and I'm going to give you three picks. So we'll start off with my favorite pick to win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and that is quarterback Josh Rosen of the Arizona Cardinals. Now, he is currently 9-1 to one according to Bovada and the Las Vegas sports book. Those boys out in the desert, shout out to them. Josh Rosen was drafted 10th overall by the Arizona Cardinals, and he's in the running for the starting gig, right? But let's take a look at some of the, the things that line up in his favor. So he's the most NFL-ready quarterback of all the prospects in the draft. Coming from UCLA with Jim Mora Jr. at the time, prior to him getting fired, he played in a very pro-style offense. So... Josh Rosen of all the quarterbacks also looked the most comfortable in the pocket. When you just watch his game tape, and I've been studying this draft class for many, many years now. This has been a highly touted draft class. And Rosen just looks the part, right? He just looks like a guy. He got the swagger like Aaron Rodgers. He knows his shit don't stink. And many people have said that he needs a challenge. So now this offensive playbook in Arizona is going to be on his shoulders. Uh, as I was doing my research for this particular pick and as I've started my research for the NFL season, I was just baffled at the fact that the Cardinals won eight games last year. They were throwing out arguably some of the worst quarterback play in the entire league. And that's saying something because we saw a lot of bad quarterback play last year. But guys like Carson Palmer took snaps, Blaine Gabbert took snaps, Andrew Stanton, and they still won eight games, not to mention their best offensive player wasn't even playing all year, and that's running back David Johnson. He's coming back. He's healthy. He's ready to go. He had a wrist injury, so we're not even worried about that really as a running back because he didn't blow out a knee. He didn't break anything in the lower half of his body. He'll be good to go. He'll be one of those top five fantasy picks this year. And I think he's going to be the start of week one, right? Sam Bradford and Mike Glennon are his competition, but let's be honest. Sam Bradford has kneecaps of a 96-year-old woman. And Mike Glennon, you know, if he starts a game or two for you because your starter went down, you're happy. But for the most part, it's not something to be worried about. I think if he could lead them to the playoffs, and I think that this is one of the teams that I think can win that division. I know it sounds crazy, but it'll be hard to ignore him for, for Rookie of the Year. So I really like Josh Rosen at 9-1. to one. Let's move on over to a mid-tier pick. I think has a great chance to win this award, and that is running back Royce Freeman. Third round pick for the Denver Broncos. Look, I've been following this guy's career ever since he was at Oregon, and I was a fan of the program, right? Marcus Mariota, as you guys know, is one of my favorite college football players of all time, and he got to play with him that one year that they went to the national championship. Let's take a look at why I really like Royce Freeman at 18-1, to 1, right? He was one of my favorite running backs in the draft. The former Oregon Duck, 6 foot, 229 pounds. He's bigger than the two running backs that are slated ahead of him. Devontae Booker and D'Angelo Henderson that are on the depth chart. Uh, Denver was 12th in rushing offense under Mike McCoy. Similar run scheme to what they had in Oregon. So Denver is known for having that zone read kind of thing. Uh, running system, I should say. 
And there's no assignments on the offensive line. It's just you pull in one direction or you pull in the other direction and you hit the first man that you see. So that's a zone run scheme that they have. So he's very, very familiar with that. Uh, the buzz for this dude is real, right? Every report I've been reading from Roto World and NFL.com, everybody's raving about him at OTAs and in rookie minicamp. And I think even if he doesn't start week one, it's his job to lose for the long haul, right? There's been many situations in the past where rookies didn't even start their opening game. Look, Alvin Kamara last year didn't really get going until after they got rid of AP. So even if your guy doesn't start, I think at 18 to 1, he provides tremendous value here. The Broncos need a guy to replace C.J. Anderson, who, you know, accounted for 60 percent of the uh, the run market share for that backfield last year. And C.J. Anderson is now in Carolina. Jamal Charles is a shot fighter and he's out the league. Uh, sorry to hear about that because he's one of my favorite players growing up. And like I said, Devontae Booker and D'Angelo Henderson are on the depth chart. And those aren't guys that really scare me. So I think at 18 to one, this is a guy that could could crack a thousand yards on this offense if he gets the if he gets that sixty percent market share that CJ Anderson had last year. So he's my favorite mid tier pick. And now long shot, I know you degenerates out there. I know you fantasy owners. This is a guy that might be going in those late, late rounds. A guy that could be a very impactful rookie. And that guy for me is my boy from Texas A and M, Christian Kirk, wide receiver, Arizona Cardinals. He is currently at thirty three to one. Now, you're looking at a massive, massive jump, right? This guy, right after the draft, uh, let's say around mid-May, you're looking at a dude that was like 85 to 1 to win Rookie of the Year. So you've seen a significant jump in those odds. And here's why you've seen a significant jump, right? The reason why he's a long shot is he's one of, no longer as big as a long shot, I should say. He's one of the most gifted offensive weapons in this draft class, right? I He reminds me a lot of uh, Percy Harvin. If you remember uh, Percy Harvin, his impact as a rookie was very significant for that Minnesota Vikings offense. Uh, run, catch, return threat. Steve Sarkeesian, now the offensive coordinator for the Atlanta Falcons, formerly was the head coach of USC. And um, I remember listening to him on Colin Cowherd's show one day, and he said that he tried to recruit Christian Kirk very hard. And he said, and I quote, he is the best offensive weapon offensive player I have ever seen. And that's high praise for a guy that's been coaching for close to 20 years. Uh, the scheme and the system provides a chance for him to shine. He's not going to be asked to be the number one re wide receiver. He's not going to be like DJ Moore in Carolina, who's going to have to step in and be that number one guy that they really need to stretch down the field. Uh, he's, he's arguably the third option. He's not arguably. He is the third option on this team offensively, right? You have David Johnson re re returning, so that's going to force teams to stack the box to stop him first. You have a guy in Larry Fitzgerald, the grizzled vet out of the slot, who led the league in catches last year. Shout out to Larry Fitzgerald. He is the main threat catching for them. And this is my favorite tidbit as I was doing my research for the NFL season is there's a built-in chemistry between Josh Rose and the quarterback that they drafted in the first round and Christian Kirk, the wide receiver that they drafted on day two. And growing up, Josh Rosen and Christian Kirk would travel to all these many, many skill camps, right? The Nike Spark Camp, Adidas Camp, Under Armour Camps, and they made it their goal to be paired up together. So on all these one-on-one -on -one drills, these seven-on-seven -seven competitions, you had Christian Kirk was on the receiving end of Josh Rosen passes. So there's a built-in chemistry there. I'm expecting some fireworks from this dude. I think he's very talented. And I think at 33-1, to 1, it's worth the investment and it's worth stashing him on your fantasy team while you're at it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. You'll be getting a lot more of these. I'll be doing some MVP stuff, some over-unders, a bunch of stuff to get you through the dog days of summer. As you can see right here, these lovely logos represent the two, uh, the two things. Uh, Veterans Minimum. You can find us at Veterans Minimum on Twitter. Veterans underscore Minimum on Instagram. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, Veterans Minimum, that you're watching it on here. Give a thumbs up to the video or a thumbs down, you know, if you want me to improve a little bit. Uh, leave some comments below and you can find me at The Lamb Show, Lamb Show on Twitter, Instagram. Check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash The Lamb Show. And we'll catch you next time with some more horny stuff to get you through the football season. Peace.